This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 698 of the Horse Tip Daily Show. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. Hi, Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is an excerpt from the Horse.com's Weekly Horse Health Report on the Horses in the Morning Show, episode number 506. The Horse.com digital editor, Michelle Anderson, and Dr. Jones of Florida Equine Veterinary Services take the mystery out of x-rays. But first, let's hear from our sponsor, Kentucky Performance Products. Spooky, tense, edgy, unfocused... If these words describe your horse, a calming supplement could make training easier and riding more fun. Trouble-free paste from Kentucky Performance Products is scientifically formulated to support proper nervous system function and help your horse maintain a more confident, focused, and relaxed disposition. Trouble-free contains a blend of ingredients that support your horse's normal nerve cell and muscle function and is available in a convenient 80cc oral dosing syringe containing two 40cc servings. Ask for Trouble Free from Kentucky Performance Products at your local feed and supply store or go to www.kppusa.com. And now, on with today's tip. Well, so the radiographs, so I, like my vet will take radiographs and he'll look at them and he's like, oh, see this here and there's this thing here. And, and he goes, do you see this? And I, and I just shake my head, yes. I don't see anything, though. Like, <laughs> I find them extremely confusing. So can we start out by telling everyone what is a radiograph? What, when they shoot that, the, the camera at the, the leg or the hoof or wherever they're taking the, the radiograph, what are they getting? Okay, first I'll tell you, they're getting phone um, phone images, primarily, and that machine they're shooting is called a generator. Everybody used to call it the x-ray machine. It's really called a generator. It generates the x-ray um, uh, uh, atoms that come out, the radiation, basically, that's being shot out, and it gets captured on that plate that's on the other side of the horse, and that creates the image. That plate creates the image. So the, the plate is actually the most expensive part of the um, imaging now, especially in digital, but uh, the x-rays, we can use any x-ray machine or generator on any of those plates. The plates make the difference on what the x-ray looks like in the the final say or the end result. And uh, it shoots through and it captures bone outlines. And in the digital world, they have algorithms that create it digitally for um, us onto a laptop within about four seconds, which is really the beauty of the digital um, at the farm. Now, there's a third one called computed. <clears throat> the first one is the old conventional ones where you had the plate and you had to go develop them in a, a developer tank and, and look at the x-rays at a hospital or a clinic. But the third one is computed, which a lot of uh, clinics have because they have many veterinarians. They couldn't buy sixty to $90,000 um, digital x-ray machines for every single truck. It gets quite costly. So they get it computed, and what it is is these these uh, plates, they're special plates, they're thicker than your normal x-ray plates, capture the image, they go back, they put it into a machine, and it digitizes the image. And that's called computed radiography. So you still get a digital image, but you just don't get it right there at the farm. So you have to take it back to the uh, hospital or clinic. Okay. And you mentioned that you know, we used to call them the x-ray machines, or maybe the layman will say x-ray machine. Is <coughs> the term radiograph and x-ray interchangeable? Yes. Um, x-ray is basically the, the uh, beam that's coming out of the generator, but everybody nowadays has been calling those images x-rays for years. That is pretty much just stuck. Um, but they're actually called radiographs. That's the true word for it, the medical term. And, uh, and that's basically telling you that it's a, um, a graph of the radiation image. Okay. So when do you get out your generator, your x-ray machine? What kind of injuries lead you as a, a vet to recommend that kind of diagnosis? 
Well, in the lameness exam, which a lot of people have been involved with, unfortunately, with their, their animals or their horses, in the lameness exam, you're looking at a horse trotting back and forth, under saddle, in a circle, all that, and you come up with a limb that has an issue we do nerve, nerve blocks to localize where the issue is, meaning is it high, is it low, um, is it around the hock, is it around the fetlock, is it in the foot. And then once we localize it, then we take an x-ray or a radiograph of that area because we can't x-ray the entire body. That would be quite costly for the client. So you localize where the problem is, and then you take a radiograph image of it and look at that to determine possibly is there a bony or joint problem. And if that doesn't uh, give you enough information, of course, then we step up to ultrasound and then to MRI and then nuclear photography. It depends on the case. Um, we don't just take one x-ray. Even nowadays with Founder, we used to just take one x-ray to see if the coffin bone has rotated in the foot. We now take two front to back because we've seen that sometimes the coffin bone rotates side to side as well as front, front and back. So um, it's always a minimum of two images. That's the rule that's taught in medical, dental, and veterinary world. You need two images to really get a good view of the area you're looking at to see it in a 3D view because it's a flat picture, and you're only getting a 2D view. If you take another picture, you get more of a 3D view to kind of see the bone all the way around. Does that make sense? Yeah, and so every time that thing goes off and another, another image is shot, it adds up in my head like I'm calculating how much the bill's going to be at the end. <laughs> right. I mean, most of the time when you're trying to get a quote for a lameness exam, you should at least consider two to four x-rays or radiographs taken of your horse's injury site. Um, some people will have hock x-rays done on a pre-purchase. It's really best to get four images of the hawk because it gives you a complete 3D view all the way around. Every surface of that hawk is looked at very closely in a four-view world. If you get only two, you might miss something. And uh, if you're trying to do it as a cursory exam, the usual standard is four views of the hawk and four, four to six views of the foot, depending on um, how much they scrutinize the navicular bone and things like that. So. Um, so, um, with <laughs> when you're taking the uh, the radiographs, what parts of the horse can you shoot? Because you mentioned the hock and, and the hoof uh, and the leg. Is there anywhere else that you can use radiographs to diagnose problems? That's a great question. Yes, uh, we are limited in the field as field veterinarians to basically the limbs, the neck, and the skull, and sometimes the neck not quite so well depending on how good our generator is. So you might see your veterinarian pull out this thing that looks like it came back from the 1950s. Those still work. They just don't have enough power to shoot through a neck or a skull sometimes. But they do great for the feet and the, the hawks and that kind of thing. Um, but the generator itself has got to have enough power in it to exude enough energy radiation out to be captured on that plate. And um, so it all depends on what they have in the field, what they can take. But once you get to lungs, that's done usually at a hospital or university setting. And not necessarily can they get all the lung fields on these big warm, warm bloods. Could they get the entire lung field, but they can get a good amount of them. Um, the dorsal spine area of a horse is very hard to get, especially the very flat across draft horse types and draft horse crosses. You can't really get enough energy to shoot through all that muscle mass to get an image of the bone because uh, you need the extra plate really right up against the bone. And then the pelvis is the other key area that's hard for us to x-ray. Um, they've done some under anesthesia at the hospitals and clinics and universities where they can take an x-ray of the pelvis once they're under anesthesia. But it may not be a good picture because there's so much muscle mass. And so when you do take images, do you ever seek second opinions? Like, is there a specialist who reads equine radiographs? I know, you know, in human medicine, lots of times they go off and then come back with a report. Yeah, the human medicine is wonderful because everything's in the clinic. Nothing's mobile um, mm -hmm. except for the ambulance. But the ambulance doesn't have a radiograph machine. And um, so they can 
what they do is they pop it into what we call a PAC system, which is an off-site storage system of your digital images nowadays. Whether it's computed or digital x-rays, they can store them off-site. So they just put it in this PAC system, notify the radiologist that case number whatever has been shot and we need your readout. And they read it out, then they, put their, they type their readout into the slot and then the doctor that called for those radiographs can look that up underneath the PAC system and get the actual readout. So your general doctor doesn't read the radiograph. It's actually a radiologist that reads it. Now, mm -hmm. we do radiologists in the veterinary world, and they do go for the extra specialty and what we call diplomat status, where they get more letters behind their name, to um, earn the degree of a radiologist. But they're primarily used more in small animal, and small animal has more of a referral system. In equine, I have sent off radiographs to be looked at because I don't see those every day. Um, and there's the obvious uh, in some of the skull radiographs, and I've seen enough of them to, to diagnose quite a bit. But if I have any doubt, I definitely send off skull radiographs. That's usually a common thing to send off. And uh, sometimes the neck images are common for some of the young practitioners to send off. They can take the x-ray. They can do the technical part, but the actual reading out of it may um, be a little difficult for them, so they could send those off. And a lot of times they'll send them back, especially new graduates, to the radiologists that taught them, so they sent them back to the university where they came from. And there's probably a $50 fee, maybe 75 now for that, for a radiologist to formally read it out and send you a written report, which is nice to have because then you've got something in black and white in case there's any kind of issue down the line. Um, so it's worth the, the extra $50 to have it read out sometimes. Okay. And so when we're out in the field and we're holding our horse and, and, our, and the radiographs are being taken, you know, there's a certain amount of radiation, right? And so exposure, yeah. Yeah. So how how should horse owners make sure they're protected? Like is it the vet's responsibility to give them an apron or is it your responsibility as the horse owner to go, oh wait a second, I think we're doing radiographs maybe. <laughs> um, maybe I should have an apron on. Um, or is that necessary? Yeah, it is necessary to have. Um, the ambulatory radi radiograph generators that we have don't have that large of a spread, but there is a bit of a spread of um, what we call scatter beams that are coming out. And so it's good that everybody within a nine-foot radius, is the generalization they say, has lead on. And the minimal amount that's actually in the beam, like the gloved hand that's holding the plate, um, it's best if you don't even have to have the gloved hand. If you have an extension arm and then a glove on that extension arm, that would be better. Um, sometimes horses don't appreciate all that extra metal around them, so it's sometimes a safety issue of putting a person's body up against the um, horse with just the plate seems to work better. Um, but you are exposing that person, even with lead on, you're exposing them to extra radiation. As long as the lead is working, it should keep it from penetrating their skin, and they can um, get issues from that. Um, usually the big thing is stand behind the person holding the generator, whether it's a technician or a veterinarian, holding generator, generator standing behind them would always be best because it's less scattered. Being right in the direct angle of the beam is not really a good idea. Okay. And so I have to ask, what's the craziest thing you've seen on a radiograph? <laughs> um, no, wait. Well, let me just jump in here and just tell you that this, this answer is incredibly different depending on what type of doctor you ask. Uh, I'm hoping that it's not going to be at all like when I ask a ER doctor uh, what was the weirdest thing they saw on a radiograph. I'm hoping your answer is going to be a little bit different, Dr. Jones. <laughs> yeah, I've got, and it was, it was clearly a, um, you could see it from the outward part of the horse, but I don't think I could describe it very well. We had a horse, and I, and I had to have the farrier come out. I couldn't even describe to the farrier what I was looking at, and this is like, seven, eight o'clock at night, because I got to call at six or seven when they're feeding, this horse had lost its shoe. And I'm not even sure if it's lost its front shoe or its back shoe, but it was entangled on the foot on the back shoe, the back foot. And it was in such a position that one side of the horseshoe, because it was a regular sized horseshoe, was in the coronary band. And the other one was kind of coming around the inside of the leg and was tucked very tight into the sulci next to the frock. Are you getting this at all? Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, so I have to take an x-ray to see how deep into the coronary band it had penetrated. How did it, it do it that? If it had penetrated at all, 
than how deep in the sulci it had penetrated, if it had penetrated at all. Now, we take pictures of nails up in the feet. You know, they step on nails, and that's a big, big, big problem in horses. Um, taking the nail out before you have the vet out is always a bad idea because it's kind of good to see where the nail went. Now, if you have to haul the horse to a facility, you'll probably have to take it out because you don't want to make the nail go in any deeper. But if you keep the horse still and it's near an x-ray outlet, then you could probably get it done. But this, this was so unique. I have no idea how the shoe got on there. And the thing I showed you, I was trying every bolt cutter I could think of on my truck to get this thing cut in half so I could take it off because you could not manipulate it because the horse was very painful. Even sedated and blocked, I was worried about pushing it further into the coronary band or more up into the sole of the foot. So all I wanted to do was cut off at the very toe of the shoe and then take the two pieces apart, and I couldn't get it done. So I finally called the farrier who had a, and it was a steel shoe, of course, who had a um, basically a blowtorch um, cutter and a grinder, and he was able to cut it off. We took it off in two pieces, but it was the most interesting, <laughs> interesting oh, uh, yeah, emergency yeah. I've ever seen in my entire life. And when I was trying to describe the theory, he goes, did he just twist the shoe, step and twist? And I go, no. It's not on the bottom of its no. foot, except for the one part is sticking in the sulci, and the other one's coming around the side oh. of the wall and up into the coronary band. Oh. Oh, I, oh. I, I, it's like I feel like I have a, like a, a barrier nail underneath my fingernail right now. That they can. Yeah, my, my toes are <laughs> curling a bit on that one. It was, and that poor guy was painful. It did not penetrate into any deep soft tissue. It was all superficial, but it was just wow. the most amazing thing. Um, we've got pictures. I don't even know if I've got pictures um, at the clinic. I think I do have them. I don't know where the heck they are to post on our Facebook page or post on your Facebook page but of the outside of the foot. Um, and I'm sure the radiographs are somewhere in our pack system. But, but yeah, that's <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. very, very interesting. Ouch. One last thing I do want to mention, because we get this request all the time, is a lot of places that we, we're included have what we call pack system or an off-site system where we store our images because of safety reasons, medical records. We're required here in the state of Florida to keep medical records for three years, and then after that you can discard them. And so since those images are not part copied anymore, they're still considered part of the medical records. So we'd always get the comments back in the old days when we made films is, I paid for those x-rays, they should be mine. Or I'd get a new client saying, well, I had, I had x-rays taken with another vet, but they never gave them to me. Well, those are part of your med medical records, and that's even true in the human world. So they have to stay with the hospital and the clinic that, that, um, that it was generated at for a minimum of three years, at least in Florida, those images can be made, copies can be made of those. And just like you would in your medical record world, if there's copies made, there's usually a fee with it. So I just wanted to pre-warn everybody that, yes, you paid for radiograph, but you actually paid for the service. And the service was taking the images and reading out the images. And some places will charge a lower fee for taking the images, but they also have a radiograph review fee of reviewing the images, which may include a consultant reviewing it, or it may just be the veterinarian taking you know, the chance to look at it. Yeah, but the horse owner then doesn't actually own those images. Right, it's part of their medical records. They own it because it's part of their medical records, but if they actually want them physically, there's always a fee to burn a disc or email it to them, that kind of thing. Okay. Well, ladies, this has been fantastic. We are yeah. at the end of our show. So, um, you guys, this has been great information. If anybody has any questions, obviously you can go to thehorse.com or floridaequine.com and find Dr. Jones there. And uh, you guys, thank you so much. We'll talk to thank you again you. next week. Thank Take you. Take care. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye, Bye. guys. Well, there you go. To listen to more of the Horse.com's tips, just go to Horse Tip Daily and go to the Experts drop-down menu on the left. Don't forget to support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they make these podcasts possible. Today's podcast has been brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products Trouble-Free Paste. Ask for Trouble Free by name at your local tack and feed supplier, or you can purchase it online at kppusa.com. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover on the show. You can subscribe to all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zune and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zune, or MP3 player. You can also listen to the shows right on Facebook. The player's right there every day. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip.
Until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.